With market power, we usually go to the extreme and think about a monopoly where there's only one firm in the market. And we wanna be able to draw up that graph and think about the pricing and profits that come from that type of a situation. So first up, let's think about monopoly pricing when we have this market power. A monopoly is a market served by only one firm. In this situation, marginal revenue equals marginal cost, but it does not equal the price. In a price taker world where there's many firms competing, we have marginal revenue is equal to the price, is equal to the marginal cost, is equal to the demand curve if we draw it up. But here with market power in a monopoly setting, this will not be true. The firm still wants to follow the rule of rational life and keep acting until marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost, which in this case, the marginal benefit is the marginal revenue for the firm. So we're gonna keep producing until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. But given our monopoly power, given our market, market power in this monopoly setting, that will not lead us to a situation where we charge price equals marginal cost. A profit maximizing firm with market power will expand output as long as marginal revenue exceeds marginal cost, but price will be lowered and output will be expanded until marginal revenue equals marginal cost, but it will not be lowered such that it is equal to the marginal cost. The price charged by a firm with market power will be greater than its marginal cost. So let's look at the standard textbook graph of a monopoly situation. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to assume constant marginal costs, though this not always be the case. We will look at other graphs where we have marginal cost curves that are different than constant returns. So it could be that it's our standard upward sloping, uh, but here we're just gonna do the simplest model to introduce the graph that we have. And what we do is just what we would do in any other kind of firm situation is the first thing you wanna do is you wanna think about where is marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. And here we have this downward sloping marginal revenue that we will talk about in another video lecture. But we want to set that point where we have marginal revenue equals our marginal cost and then this becomes our quantity that we are going to be concerned with so you always find that marginal revenue equals marginal cost and this is our quantity then what we say is at this quantity this is our monopoly quantity we now can say with that quantity how much can we charge given the willingness to pay of consumers within this market we can find that point at that quantity and where it hits our demand curve. So that will tell us the willingness to pay for that quantity of output given the market preferences of this situation. So the monopoly price becomes the, the point where the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost, gives us the quantity, and where that quantity hits our demand curve gives us that price. So here we have the monopoly quantity is this QM and the monopoly price is this PM. This is different than the competitive situation where the marginal cost representing kind of our supply curve here crosses our demand curve. Here we would be out at this point, right? And we would have this quantity competitive and this price competitive. So we would end up with greater total surplus in that market as we serve more consumers. And so our total surplus would be this entire triangle would be consumer surplus in a competitive market. Whereas here, we're not gonna have that much output. And so we're not going to get as much total surplus. Right. So we're going to stop the market at this point QM up to A on the demand curve here. And so this area of uh, uh, consumption between QM and QC does not happen. So those transactions do not take place. So what we can think about here is what's going on with the surplus in this situation then. For the units that are actually consumed and produced, right? we can think about the producer surplus for the firm. Everything below the price you actually get to charge, but above the cost that you face. And so the firm faces this cost, their supply curve of this MC, 
And for all the units that they sell, they get to sell at this price, PM. And so our producer surplus becomes this box here uh, shaded in in green. Right. Everything below the price that they get to sell at, but above their cost for those units. That becomes producer surplus. What we leave behind is these transactions that do not take place, these transactions between QM and QC. Well, how much benefit do those transactions provide to society? Well, they provide quite a bit. The difference between our willingness to pay and what it actually costs us to produce for all of those units is surplus that we no longer get because we don't engage in these transactions. We don't engage in the transaction where we say, oh, here's the willingness to pay and here's the cost. We lose that much value from all of those potential transactions. These transactions should take place, but do not. And so this entire blue region here shaded in, this triangle A double prime E, E is dead weight loss. So we have all of these areas being deadweight loss because the transactions don't take place even though they should. We also have that producer surplus triangle or a rectangle from the transactions that do take place. And then finally, we can think of the consumer surplus. The consumers in this situation do get some surplus, right? Everything below their willingness to pay, but above the price that they actually have to pay. So they get this triangle up here PM, A, P max, right? And so they keep some consumer surplus. This is quite a bit smaller than the consumer surplus they had in the competitive situation where they paid the price PC and consumed all of these units out to QC, right? Where we get this much larger consumer surplus situation. But nonetheless, they do keep some of the consumer surplus. And so producers and consumers get some surplus. Society as a whole takes on some area of deadweight loss but we have this kind of standard setup of the monopoly situation and we can see that it's less efficient because we now have had some deadweight loss entered into society. So this is this pure monopoly situation and we have to think about this kind of context. This is the basic setup. You find where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That's your quantity. You take that quantity and see where it hits your demand curve and that will tell you your price. And then you can analyze the surplus and deadweight loss from there. So here we can bring in a little bit more complex analysis and we can have an increasing marginal cost curve and we can look at the profit from the situation. Remember that profit is total revenue minus total cost. It is not just comparing to your marginal cost or to your variable costs. So what do you do in this situation? Well, here we're bringing in our average variable costs and our average total costs to analyze what's happening. The first thing that you do is you have to go and find where marginal cost is equal to your marginal revenue, right? And so what you do is you find where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. This is where the firm following the rule of rational life will produce at this quantity here, Q. So that's the first thing that we find where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You take that quantity and you say, okay, I am capable, given the demand conditions of this market, of charging a price of P in this market, where that quantity hits the demand curve. So that becomes my quantity, that becomes my price, and then I can analyze from there. To think about the total revenue of the situation, what I have to do is I have to think about price times quantity, as giving me my total revenue. So my total revenue in this situation is going to be this big box of price times quantity. So this entire area is my total revenue here. All right, so that orange box highlighted over plus the white gives us that price times quantity for all of my output. So that's my revenue from that situation, right? Now I have to do total revenue minus total cost to figure out my profit. Well, what are my total costs from this situation? My total cost from this situation is I can think about, okay, at that quantity that I am producing at Q, I can think about what are my total costs in this situation by thinking about what are my average total costs in this situation at this quantity. I don't care about the rest of the curve, this slope up here, it doesn't matter. At this quantity, this is my average at this point. 
So what I can do is I can figure out my average total costs give me this is how much it costs me per unit for all of those units. And I can say this is how much it costs me, ATC, for how many units? For all of these units up to Q. So the area that represents my total cost curve then becomes this lower box here that I'm shading in green. All right. That becomes my total cost. I can take that point on my average total cost curve and I can say that is the current average total cost. So multiply that by my quantity will give me my total cost. It doesn't matter what my averages were up here at all. Think about it. If you're at a situation where I say the current average that you have is 25 and you have done this for four units, what are your total costs? How would you figure that out? You would say my average 25 times the total units that I have four. So my average total costs 25 times my quantity four would give me 100 as my total cost. It does not matter if my average at some point in time, say after the first unit produced, was 75. It doesn't matter if it was up here. All that matters is what is my average now at the quantity that I am producing. So I take that average, that average total cost, right, this amount right here, and I say, okay, that's my quantity, that's my total cost, average total cost, and then for how many units, and I from that can figure out my total costs. And so it would be this box here. And so what I end up with is this uh, total revenue is the bigger box, and my total cost is this smaller box. The difference between the two would be the orange box that remains, and that would be my economic profit from this graphical setup. Economic profit is not the same thing as producer surplus. Just as a little reminder here, producer surplus is the difference between the total revenue and the total variable cost. We can represent this by showing the area between the price they receive, the firm, and the marginal cost for each unit. Producer surplus is the difference between what you'd be willing to sell at and what you get to sell at. This is a short run type analysis. What you would be willing to sell at is a short run decision. You analyze this decision based on your average variable costs and not your average total costs. Thus, the difference between profit and producer surplus is the fixed cost of production. So for thinking about the producer surplus, what we actually want to do is we, in this situation, are going to get not only the profit, the orange rectangle here, but we will also get the purple region here. This is the costs above their marginal costs. This is what they would be willing to produce in the short run for the units that we produce. So again, we think about the quantity that we would produce at, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. We get our quantity from this context, and then we can determine our price from that quantity and now we can say, okay, well, for all of these units that we're producing, what would we in the short run have been willing to produce these at? What costs? And we could think about that as our marginal cost curve for all of those units that we're producing. Now, because we have this kind of changing rate of marginal costs here, we can take a nice little identity here and understand that this shaded in region here of this purple is actually equivalent to this shaded in region of purple here. What we can do is we can compare our price that we get to charge to our average variable cost at that quantity. And so what we can do is we can say, okay, well, these are our average variable costs at this quantity. So we can think about all of our variable costs at this quantity, right? And we can compare our variable costs to what we actually get in terms of total revenue so we can say, okay, well, but we have all of this total revenue here, and the difference between the two would be our surplus then. So that gives us, in this case, this economic profit region of the orange and the uh, surplus here that we get from this purple. And so what we get is this entire area here is producer surplus, whereas just the orange is our economic profit. One mistake is to think that monopolists always earn a profit. Pure monopolies do not always make an economic profit. 
What if economic conditions change? What if demand were to drop? Well, we can end up in a situation where a firm actually has loss, right? So we can compare where our marginal revenue hits its marginal cost. That gives us the quantity within the market. And then we can see at what price can we charge within this market given that quantity. And at this price, we can take that price and compare it to our average total costs at that quantity of output. And if the total costs are greater than the total revenue, then we end up with a region of loss. Now, what happens in the long run in this situation is that firms will exit this situation. Maybe not in the short run, as long as their price is covering their average variable costs, they won't because they're still creating producer surplus for these units right, of this much here, this bottom rectangle. However, they are in the long run taking on loss. There's negative profits here. So these firms will eventually exit once their long run situation comes up and they now can face a chance to change and alter their fixed costs. So even the higher monopoly prices are not enough to cover the average total costs in this situation. And so we experience loss and firms would exit this market.